Hello and welcome to this series for beginners programming Python 3. This is an introduction video. The main programming starts in the next video in the series. In this video, I'd just like to do some setup to get us able to actually write some Python code and execute it. To do that, we need two things. One is Python and also a text editor to write some code. First things first, then let's uh, install Python. I'm going to do this entire series on Windows. If you're using uh, Linux, which I do uh, mainly at home, I'm going to make the assumption that you're probably not going to have any problems installing Python 3 on the computer. Um, if you're using Mac OS X, I think the Mac comes already with Python installed, but I think it might be per, uh, Python 2. So you'll need to install Python 3. There's plenty of tutorials online to do that. Um, if you get really stuck with that, then I can always make a video doing it on the Mac as well. Otherwise, we're going to carry on from now on in the Windows environment, which is usually the trickiest environment to set up anything to do with uh, to do with programming. Now, straight away, we get nice big yellow button saying Python download Python 3.72 on the screen. I don't want to click this one because it's going to give me the 32-bit version and I have a 64-bit computer. So I'm going to go to the Windows link here and then click on the latest Python 3 release here. And down the bottom somewhere here, there's a whole list of uh, installables and executables and things. I'm going to download this Windows x86 64 executable, executable installer. So I'm just going to click on that and save the file. Okay, having downloaded that file, I've got one more in here, which is kind of preparation for later, but here's the file download. To install Python, it's a simple matter of a double click, clicking run, and now you're faced with a couple of choices. So if you're happy with the path where it's going to install it here, in mine it's uh, in app data, local, programs, Python, Python 3.7, then okay, otherwise you'll want to customize. I'm going to leave this as it is, but I'm going to click this button at the bottom here to add Python 3.7 to path. And we need that to be able to use Python from the console. We technically could use it anyway from the console, but every time we type Python, we would have to prefix it with this long address to where Python is installed, and I don't want to do that. So having checked that box, I'm going to click the Install Now button. And that's the setup then finished. What remains is, is just to test the installation is working. Now, Windows can be a bit funny. It might be worth doing a restart of your computer before carrying on. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope this, this works because I removed Python anything from my computer before doing this video. So I'm going to first of all open a control panel and then in the control panel I selected top right here. I think the default view in Windows 10, I can't remember Windows 7 is category. I've gone to small icons, the system here, clicked on system, advanced system settings on the left hand side in the menu. And then there's an environment variables button here. Just click on that. And let's have a look what we have here. So the first thing to note is I've got a path variable in my user variables. And if I click edit on there, you can see I've got four values in here. The important ones are the first two. So the Python installation has added these two in. And if you don't know what it is, the path, but whenever you're in the console and you type uh, to execute a program, Windows looks in the environment variables, first the user and then the system variables to see if that program you've typed exists in any of the paths in the path variable. That prevents you then having to type this enormous long path to the executable that you want to execute. In our case, Python is inside the local programs Python, Python 3.7. It would be a bit of a pain to have to type C users, Richard, app data, local programs Python, Python 3.7, Python all the time instead of just typing Python. If that's not in here, you're going to have to manually enter this path. So remember the path that you use to install your Python installation, you'll need to have that and then paste it into here. So you'll create a new variable and have to paste it into there and save it, etc. But you should, after the installation, have it in there. And like I said, maybe a restart also would help. Let's cross our fingers here. I'm going to open a console and just check that Python is installed and working. So here's the console to test it. I'm just going to type Python and I'm in the Python interpreter where I can start typing Python code with Python 3.7.2. To get out of this, I'm going to type exit with uh, open and closing normal brackets, press enter, and I'm out. The other way I can check the Python version is to type Python dash and then capital V, which gives me the version of Python straight out into the console like that. So I can be happy that I'm able to execute scripts from my console. And this will be very, very similar on the Mac and on Linux as well from the terminal. You'll type python-v and see what version you have. If you already had Python 2 installed, then you might uh, need to type, and you see you do python-v and you see python.2 something. 
you might need to type Python 3 and then you'd see the Python version. I haven't got that on my computer. I remember when I was using the Mac that this was the case. If I want to use the Python 3, I had to type Python 3 in that way. If you get any problems with this or anything, then just drop a comment uh, below the line. And there are literally thousands of videos about out there uh, installing Python on various operating systems. We're going to type CLS just to clear the screen and to get rid of the prompt. Uh, we'll see that again in the next video. So now we come to, uh, we need a piece of software to write our Python code. Now, we actually just need a text editor. Any text editor will do apart from Notepad. I'm assuming you're not thinking of Microsoft Word or something like this as a text editor, but Notepad is not a good text editor because it adds on all sorts of hidden characters and things unless you turn certain settings off. Likewise, WordPad is pretty bad. There are lots and lots of options of what to use. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the main ones that are in use today. Um, one of them is Visual Studio Code, which you can see here on the screen. Uh, a lot of the developers I work with use this now as standard. It's really, really relatively light, great um, text editor or edit code editor environment, debugging and all sorts of things inside. Really, really good and becoming probably the most popular software for programming today. PyCharm is another one which is also really, really good. Everything integrated together for Python. There's a community version and also a professional version. Atom is another one which I've seen a lot of people using at work. Uh, another really, really nice uh, editor which I've used also myself. Then there's Sublime Text which I used for many years myself, which uh, has great syntax highlighting, is very, very fast, particularly when searching uh, text files and things like this. That's also a very good option. Another one on the Mac that I really like using and you, you will have seen if you followed my chess um, series or anything like that is Text Wrangler. It's a real uh, lightweight text editor for the Mac. I really, really like this. And last but not least is Notepad++ on Windows. And this is in fact what we'll be using at the start of this course. Before you scream or somebody's told me I should use Visual Studio Code or PyCharm or something, Later on in the course, we'll probably switch to one of those IDEs, but I think just for getting started, it's really good to have a plain text editor that has some good highlighting in colors of the code and using the console then to execute our Python code. So we get a, a feel for how everything works. I think that's really important. So I downloaded the 64-bit uh, version of Notepad++, just the installer here. I then just downloaded it, double clicked, installed it with all of the default options and then ran it at the end of the installation. I'm not going to show that because there is really nothing to, to set up. And I ended up with a window like this. You might wonder why I've got dark here. So if you go to settings and style configurator, there are a list of themes you can select. I selected the, uh, uh, here's the Monokai. I think there are some really strange looking ones. The Solarize one, where's the Hello Kitty? There it is. Pink, if you like, you can have as well. I thought for the videos, the most visible is probably going to be this Obsidian uh, version as well. I'm just going to zoom things in a little bit here so that when I type something, you can see the letters against the background pretty well. And we'll be using, like I said, then Notepad++ as our code editor for certainly for the first few videos of the series until we get used to executing scripts and stuff like that. Because I think it's really the, the best way uh, of getting into programming. The other IDEs are really, really good, particularly Visual Studio Code, but they do lots of code completion for you and things like that. I think when you're getting started, it's really good to use a pure text editor and learn to write the code properly before moving on to one of the uh, bigger code editing programs. Good, so we're all, you should be all set up then in this video to go in the next video some coding. Python is working, we tested in the command prompt. We have our text editor ready to go to write our Python code. All that remains is to get started. So thank you very much for watching this video and uh, see you in the next one.